Hey everyone, Judy the YouTube Lawyer here today. Today's live stream will focus on a totally different disability insurance lawsuit that also involved Dr. Charles, also known as Charlie Adelson. So as many of you know, Charlie Adelson was arrested in April of this year for the 2014 murder for hire of his former brother-in-law, Florida State University law professor, Dan Markell. So before we go and dive into the initial filings in this other federal lawsuit that involved him, let's, um, I want to show you guys information about this book that his mother, Ruth Markell, Dan Markell's mother, of course, um, has written, and it's going to be available starting in September, but you can go ahead and pre-order your copy of the book. So please support Ruth Markell and purchase her book if you are so inclined. So this is available on amazon.com. Okay, so let's dive right in since a lot of these readings or document reviews seem to take a really long time to get through. And I'm not gonna read every single thing verbatim because there are some parts that are just kind of boilerplate legal language that would probably not really be that interesting. So let me get on that. And thank you guys for being out there today. I know it's kind of a weird time, but it happens to work well with my schedule today. So uh, let's get on over to this complaint. The lawsuit is called Standard Insurance versus Charles Adelson. And this was filed in Florida federal court back in 2017. The case has actually already settled. It finally settled after court ordered mediation happened around, I would say March of last year, 2021. So that's confidential. So we don't really know what happened there, but there was a complaint followed by an answer and a counterclaim by Charlie's attorney. So Let's take a look here and hello, everybody. <laughs> yeah, no problem. You can feel free to chat if you want. Oh, by the way, okay, so I got an early comment here from Jackson Rip Holmes. He wants to know how does Adelson's incarceration affect this case? Very heavy postponement. Adelson may now be hurting to pay his lawyers and is immobilized to try to help his own case. Yeah, so um, that that's a good question because long time ago when I was in law school, I interned for a federal district judge in Maryland. And my ex-husband also clerked for a federal district court judge up in DC. So I talked to him about this. I said, have you ever seen a civil case where one of the parties was actually in jail or in prison during the trial? And he said, no. And I've never seen that either. I've never seen that happen, except in just local state family court. I've seen a couple of cases where people were clearly in prison or in jail, and they came out in their orange jumpsuits with their handcuffs on, and they were brought out for a family law related case. But in this kind of civil case, you would assume that Charlie and his attorneys would really, really prefer to not have him have to show up to his potential trial wearing the prison jumpsuit and having shackles on his legs and, and wrists. So um, I have a feeling that they would probably want to postpone the trial as long as possible for this for the current civil case, which is not this one that we're going to talk about today, but I'm talking about the Berkshire life insurance case, which is still going on in federal court. So this case we're talking about today, um, you'll find out later that Charlie has been involved in a bunch of different lawsuits in federal court as well as state court. So in this case, this one has already been um, resolved, but the Berkshire life insurance disability case is still going on. So I think they're just going to keep postponing it until the resolution of the criminal case. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that just, that would not good, look good in front of a jury. You know, if you're talking about it, trying to get disability insurance and then, then your client comes out in the prison jumpsuit. <laughs> yeah, not a good presentation there. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. Well, that would be interesting. Yeah. Oh, uh, public defenders can pay for Um, I haven't, well, I've heard of definitely attorneys helping to get clothing for their clients so they can look presentable. I mean, look at Sigfredo Garcia. He sure cleaned up nicely and looked very professional. And of course, he had glasses on. I'm not sure if he really needed those glasses during his trial. Um, 
Yeah. So it wouldn't surprise me if there might be some tiny little budget out there. I'm not sure since I never actually had to deal with that even when I was interning for public defender's offices. But I do remember a long time ago, I did bring some some glasses for one of our witnesses to wear, which she was happy to wear for for the case, but the case resolved anyway. Yeah. Yeah, he would probably know. Okay, so let's get going since um, it's still a work day here. So, um, okay, so here we are. Okay, you guys can see it, right? Okay, so this one I'll probably read mostly verbatim because it has a lot of good information. Okay, Standard Insurance Company versus Charles J. Adelson, defendant. Complaint for declar declaratory judgment of rescission. So um, this is basically the insurance company being proactive, wanting declaratory judgment, which is that they want a court ruling to say that they're right in denying him his disability insurance benefits. So Plaintiff Standard Insurance Company, by and through its attorneys, hereby files this complaint for declar declaratory judgment of rescission and other relief against defendant Charles Adelson and in support thereof states as follows. Introduction. This is an action for declaratory judgment of rescission and other relief pursuant to 28 U.S.C. 2201. Standard seeks a declaration establishing its rights and obligations pursuant to individual disability income policy number 00CC4963103, the policy issued by standard to defendant Charles J. Adelson, defendant, effected October 26, 2015. A copy of the policy is Exhibit A. Standard is entitled to the relief it seeks because of material misrepresentations made in defendant's application for the policy, upon which Standard relied in issuing the policy, and evidence of concealment by defendant of certain material facts defendant knew and should have communicated to Standard. There is, therefore, an actual controversy of a judiciable nature concerning the rights and obligations of the parties under the policy the parties. Okay, so this says they're an insurance company, principal place of business is in Portland, Oregon. Defendant um, is believed to live in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Uh, jurisdiction is proper, venue lies here. Um, okay, so here's their statement of the facts. Procurement of the policy. On or about August 8th, 2015, defendant completed an application for disability insurance, the application, with the assistance of insurance agent Douglas A. Wenberger, who signed the application on or about October 8, 2015, which was attached to and made a part of the policy. A redacted copy is Exhibit B. The application was submitted to Standard, seeking disability coverage for defendant. The application contained several questions aimed at ascertaining medical information that was material to standards consideration of the risk to insure defendant and its determination of defendant's eligibility for insurance and for various premium rates. Question number 52, subsection one of the application inquired as follows, 52. In the last 10 years, have you had been told you had been treated or seen by a medical practitioner for or been diagnosed with having number one. I think, is that a one or an L? Okay, maybe that's an L. Okay, back or neck pain or disc problems, spinal sprain or strain, sciatica, arthritis, or carpal tunnel syndrome, or any other disease, disorder, or injury of the bones, joints, nerves, or muscles. Number 10. Question number 54A and B of the application asked, 54. Other than as stated in other answers, have you within the last five years, A, been hospitalized or been seen by a physician, chiropractor, counselor, psychiatrist, therapist, or other medical practitioner, had an EKG or blood test, sleep study or other medical procedure, study or test by a member of the medical profession, 
Defendant answered no to questions number 52L and 54A and B of the application. Upon information and belief, these answers were false because defendant had or had been told he had or had been treated or was seen by a medical practitioner or had been diagnosed as having one or more of the conditions listed or had been seen by a physician or had a test within the relevant time periods. By signing the application, defendant agreed that he understood, quote, that if any answers are false, incorrect, or untrue, Standard may have the right to deny benefits or rescind my insurance policy, unquote. Further, he represented that, quote, to the best of my knowledge and belief, all answers in this application are true and complete and correctly recorded, and that any and all answers I have provided to any Standard licensed agent are recorded in this application. Unquote. Thereafter, defendant completed a disability insurance policy and application amendment. Amendment. And a disability insurance policy acceptance and application supplement. Supplement. Both signed and dated November 13th, 2015, and which were attached to and made a part of the policy. A copy of the amendment and supplement is Exhibit C. Relying on a material representation made by defendant in the application, amendment, and supplement, Standard approved defendant's application and issued the policy with an effective date of October 26, 2015. The policy provides for payment of a monthly total disability benefit of $10,000 after satisfaction of a 90-day benefit waiting period. Okay, so that's good to know because I wasn't sure in the other case how much the benefits could be, but you'll find that out later um, in some of these filings uh, because he talks about the other insurance policy with Berkshire. The policy provides after two years from the latter of the policy effective date or its most recent reinstatement date, no misstatements except fraudulent misstatements made by you or the owner in the application for the policy shall be used to rescind the policy or to deny a claim for disability starting after the end of such two-year period. No claim for disability starting after two years from the later of the policy effective date or its most recent reinstatement date will be reduced or denied on the ground that a disease or physical condition existed before such date, unless it is specifically excluded by name or specific description, or there was fraudulent misstatement in the application for the policy or for reinstatement. This action has been instituted prior to expiration of two years from the date of the issuance of the policy in compliance with the terms of the policy in Florida law, including Florida statute section 627.409, permitting a contest within two years of issuance for material misrepresentation. Defendants claim for benefits under the policy. On or about November 7, 2016, defendant completed an individual disability benefits insured statement, which he submitted to standard seeking benefits under the policy for disability commencing no later than November 9, 2016. Utilizing November 9, 2016 as the alleged onset of disability date, benefits would co first commence on or about February 9, 2017 making approximately eight months of benefits at issue as of the filing of this complaint. In addition, the value of the policy is at issue in this action because this action involves a challenge to the validity of the policy as Standard has rescinded the policy and declared the policy void. The value of the policy exceeds the jurisdictional prerequisites for this court of $75,000. Because defendants sought benefits within two years of the policy's effective date, Standard conducted a contestability review, which revealed, revealed that defendant had made material representations on the application as outlined above and determined that had defendant truthfully responded to question numbers 52L and 54A and B of the application, Standard would not have issued the policy in the same manner and benefit amount or for the same premium amount as issued. Further, Sanders' ongoing investigation of defendant's claim may possibly reveal additional material concerns. Okay, so footnote two, defendant disputes that the policy includes a 90-day benefit waiting period and claims that only a 60-day period applies. Footnote three, under the policy, the full benefit of $10,000 is payable for the first six months of disability, 
even if there is only a partial disability, then a partial benefit would be payable after the initial six months per the policy's terms in the event of partial disability. In addition, as the policy was issued and delivered in Florida, statutory attorney fees would be available if defendant obtained a judgment awarding him benefits per Florida statute section 627.428, and the amount at issue also includes the refund of premium tendered by standard, which was $10,927.68. By letter dated August 8, 2017, standard notified defendant of its determination to rescind the policy effective October 26, 2015, and standard tendered a refund of all premiums paid by defendant for the policy plus interest by check in the amount of $10,927.68. Okay. Um, count one, declaratory judgment for rescission of the policy. So they restate everything they've said already. There is now an actual controversy of a just justiciable nature as to whether defendant made misrepresentations to standard concerning defendant's medical history, entitling standard to declaratory relief, rescinding and declaring void ab initio the policy. On the facts of Erd Above, there is now an actual controversy as the misrepresentations were material to the acceptance of the risk assumed by standard and invoked standards reliance. Indeed, the misrepresentations had a significant bearing upon standards decision to issue the policy and thus standard is entitled to declaratory relief as to the validity of the policy. Okay, so let's see here. Okay, so they're asking that the court declare that the policy is void ab initio, that means from the start, and that standard had properly rescinded the policy due to the material misrepresentations made on the application and relied upon by standard, that standard is awarded attorney's fees and costs associated with seeking this judgment, that standard is granted such further relief as this court deems appropriate. Okay, so this is the same, same law firm that is also representing the other insurance company, Berkshire Life Insurance Company, in the current case that is going on against Charles Adelson. And so um, they had different attorneys from the same firm here. And uh, this is just some required stuff, summons. That's back when he lived at his previous home. And then, well, obviously, we're not going to read through this whole entire insurance policy. <laughs> I mean, I guess there might be a small subset of people that are really interested in insurance policy terms. <laughs> but um, let's just point out some of the more important details here. So this was the policy that Standard issued. And it said the annual premium was $5,970. So that's what he paid to get a basic monthly benefit of $10,000. I mean, here it clearly says the commencement date would be on the 91st day of disability. Um, this would be to age 67. Maximum benefit is to November 4, 2043, or 24 months, whichever is longer. Okay. And then there's an index cost of living rider of 3%. And it says total disability, total dis totally disabled means that due to your injury or sickness, you are unable to perform the substantial and material duties of your own occupation. And you are under the regular care of a physician appropriate for your injury or sickness. This physician's care requirement will be waived when we receive written proof satisfactory to us that further care would be of no benefit for to you. Okay. So um, there's a lot of these requirements here. Benefits for partial disability. Um, they say that means you are working your own occupation or any other occupation and you are not totally disabled. And due to your injury or sickness, you have a loss of duties or a loss of time or a loss of income and you are under the regular care of a physician appropriate for your injury or sickness. This physician's care requirement will be waived when we receive written proof satisfactory to us that further care would be of no benefit to you. So, uh, let's see. Okay.
So there was or there is something in here. Okay, exclusions and limitations. So this answers the question where people in the comments were asking whether Charlie can still get benefits or does the case end because he's now in jail. So it does say, we will not pay benefits for disability due to war. Okay, and they describe that. What does war mean? Um, they will not pay benefits for the first 90 days of your disability due to pregnancy or childbirth. Okay, not applicable here. Disability caused or contributed to by your committing or attempting to commit an assault or felony. Okay. Um, disability caused or contributed to by your actively participating in a violent disorder or riot. Disability while you are confined for any reason to a penal or correctional institution. All right. Intentionally self-inflicted injury. All right. So, um, so he wouldn't get benefits for the time that he's in in jail or prison anyway. Okay, so interesting. Um, let's see. Yeah, I don't think there was anything really worth pointing out here on the live stream because, I don't know, it was funny. One person said that she fell asleep listening to one of my live streams. And I was like, well, okay, that's fine. If I can help people sleep with, with all this legal talk, then so be it. you got to be of some value to people, right? Okay, so the rest of this filing with the complaint is just, um, you know, obviously the policy language here. And um, later on, you do see the application form that Charlie filled out when he was trying to get this insurance. And I find it interesting that he said that he is a non-smoker when we have heard at least one person say that he frequently used marijuana. So... Okay, so this is his application for disability insurance with standard periodontist. Uh, okay, a lot of stuff has been redacted. He checked off non-smoker. Non uh, he wants the $10,000 a month monthly benefit, 90-day waiting period. So I don't know why they had to challenge that. Um, okay, with well, the index cost of living. Have you applied for any disability insurance in the last 12 months? No. Will you become eligible for any disability insurance in the next 12 months? No. Well, that's interesting. Okay. Oh, well, this is when he first applied for it. Okay. Um, is there any other individual or group disability insurance currently in force or pending on you? Yes. Okay. So this is where he lists a Berkshire slash guardian policies that he also has. Um, one of them would be a monthly payout, monthly benefit of $4,450. The other one would be $6,500, and then the third one would be $3,500. Okay, so, um, all right. And he says that his current annual earned income from his current primary occupation is, it looks like a, is that an eight or a nine? I don't know. It could be like $997,000 or $987,000. It says last year it was $940,000. Okay. Um, are you currently working in your primary occupation at least 30 hours per week? He checked off yes. Do you own any part of the business where you work? He said yes. Um, he said he owned 100%, owned for two years, Number of full-time employees was four. It was an S-corp. Have you ever applied for life, disability, or health insurance and had it declined, postponed, or withdrawn? Or has any such policy issued on you been modified or rated up or canceled? Or has renewal of any such policy been refused? He said, yes. It says, yes, please explain. But he did not explain it here. Okay, have you been alerted to or received orders for something with like armed services or military unit? No. Okay. In the last five years, have you had a diagnosis or treatment by a licensed physician for a heart condition, chest pain, stroke, back or neck problem, psychological condition, including but not limited to counseling from a mental health substance abuse provider and or psychotherapy, cancer, diabetes, alcohol, or drug abuse or dependency? No. Okay, he says here he's been a periodontist for 10 plus years. 
Um, that was the old address in Tamarack, Florida. Uh, okay, do you have any other part-time or full-time occupation or employment? He checked off no. Um, well, that's interesting because I thought he also owned real estate and was a real estate investor and then had some sort of um, legal services or legal service funding type of business with his former friend. Okay, and they're asking, has he ever, in the last five years, have you participated or in the next two years, do you intend to participate as a pilot or a student pilot or as a crew member in any type of aircraft? He said no. In parachuting, hang gliding or skydiving and rock climbing or mountain climbing, in underwater diving or in organized motorcycle, boat or automotive racing? No. In the last five years, have you traveled, worked, or lived outside the USA or Canada for more than one continuous month, or do you plan to do so in the next two years? If yes, please explain. He said no. In the last five years, have you personally or has any business owned in whole or in part by you filed for bankruptcy? He said no. Okay, he says he's six feet tall and 180 pounds. All this stuff has been redacted about his medical remarks. Okay, so that's all the boilerplate stuff. I've read this application. I understand if any answers are false, incorrect, or untrue, Standard may have the right to deny benefits or rescind my insurance policy. I represent, to the best of my knowledge and belief, all answers in this application are true and complete and correctly recorded. Okay. Uh Note, any person who knowingly and with intent to injure, defraud, or deceive any insurer files a statement of claim or an application containing any false, incomplete, or misleading information is guilty of a felony of the third degree. Okay, so he signed there, signed at Fort Lauderdale on August 8, 2015, and then um, the insurance agent is Douglas, I guess it looks like Wen Wenberger from Fort Lauderdale, he signed it on October maybe 8th or 9th, 2015. Okay, so um, yeah, more stuff that Charlie signed uh, for his insurance policy. All right, so let's take a break here and take a look out here in the chat box and see what kind of comments you guys have. Um, okay, yeah, again, thank you for being here, especially in the middle of the day on a Monday. <laughs> yeah, so okay, it's all right to chat, no problem. Yeah, thank you for being here. Charlie and Katie's attraction to each other scam. <laughs> yeah, uh, Charlie's a big ball of hot mess. Hi, Tony. Okay, inmates are begging not to be his roommate. Prison suit and shackles. Uh, let's see. Okay, I think we already mentioned some of this. Oh, yeah, karma love as well, and Charlie. Okay. Hmm. Okay. You listen to me, a mentor lawyer. He couldn't let himself agree. Oh, uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess we, we agreed on most of most of the things. Yeah. Although um, I'm not sure if we're going to do some other live stream more about the Markel's family law case, but uh, we might do that. But he did make a comment on one of his shows that he thought Dan should have just let Wendy move down with the kids and he could just easily find a job in Miami. But I'm thinking it's not that easy, especially if your job is being a tenure track law professor. It is so hard to get those jobs. And it sounded like Wendy had mentioned they had tried to get um, get Dan a teaching position down at the law schools closer to Miami or University of Miami, but it didn't work out. So um, that's just the way it is. I mean, my ex-husband I've mentioned before is a law professor, and I know how difficult it is to get those tenure track law professor jobs. I mean, you basically have to graduate from Yale or Harvard or some very top law school and clerk for a federal judge, if not a Supreme Court justice, maybe have a PhD. And even then, if there's already somebody in your field teaching at that law school, then they're not going to have any openings. Usually there are no openings until somebody dies. So, um, so yeah, I don't think it's so easy. It would have been so easy for Dan to just pack up and find another job 
in Miami. And why would he want to do that when he and Wendy are divorced already? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's one thing if you guys are still married with the kids, but when it's someone that, that you're already di divorced from, like, why would you want to move all the way to a different part of the state for them so that the kids can be with the grandparents who hate you? Yeah. Um, okay. Hi, True Lifestyles. Hey, <laughs> you like my shirt? It came in the mail. Yay. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you got the windy outfit. Yeah. Because you can't really see the owl from where I'm sitting down here. So yeah. Hey, everybody. Uh, yeah. Okay. What's wrong with her voice? Yeah, I need more water, man. I should have drank some hot tea. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, it's uh, I think my voice has gone to pot, especially since doing these multiple live streams where I'm reading for a really long time. So sorry about that. Let me drink some more water. Next time I'll have more hot drinks. Ugh. Okay, sorry about that, but um, <laughs> maybe you guys can just like watch the transcript because I think within a day or two on YouTube under the video description, you can see a transcript show up where you could just read really quickly. So if you don't want to listen to my voice, you can look for the transcript under the YouTube video description within the next day or so. Yeah. Love your t-shirt. It was sometimes, yeah. I mean, I didn't really get that originally because to me, I never knew that an owl was supposed to be a symbol of death. So it wasn't until people were all talking about it online that I I knew about it or heard about it. Yeah. So he get, uh, yeah, for this policy. And as you can see, he had multiple policies with a different life insurance company, Berkshire, which he's in litigation with right now. So for this particular standard insurance policy, it would have been 10,000 a month up until he's 67 years old. And there would have also been a like a cost of living type of increase every year too. Uh, just my hunch, he wanted this disability payout to effectively retire early. And yeah, I mean, I, I think so. I agree with you. Yeah. Very interesting analysis you do. Yeah, definitely. You guys subscribe subscribe to True Lifestyles. I'm impressed that you managed to make your own Wendy Adelson court dress <laughs> power suit <laughs> using duct tape, right? Yeah. <laughs> but on bullet bourbon would make a great Halloween outfit. Charlie with a screech hair and staple money is here. Yeah, I don't know how many people around my neighborhood would, would get the outfit, though. Probably none of them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you all. Thanks for your nice words of support. We need to see Donna, Wendy, and Harvey in jail with all this evidence that keeps surfacing. Yeah, somebody point me to where where I can see the undercover recording of a phone call between Charlie and Harvey Adelson, because um, just reading through YouTube, it looks like fancy fiction is very much convinced that Harvey Adelson totally had a hand in Dan Markell's murder also, even though, you know, I feel like most people feel like Harvey probably didn't know about it beforehand. He probably knew about it after. But um, I think Fancy mentioned that there was a very incriminating phone recording. Um, so if you guys know about that or how we can find that online, please, you know, drop that in the comments. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Charlie traveled extensively in 2016. That would be hard if you really had a back problem. Yeah, totally. I mean, he said it started hurting back in January of 2016 when he was in a taxi cab in the Philippines. But then he kept going to all these other places and lots of other international travel. I mean, international travel is total pain. I mean, I don't, I don't enjoy it. So that's why I haven't traveled internationally in quite a while. Yeah, just very uncomfortable, especially if you're a bigger, you know, taller guy, you know, with back problems. This could have been a knee-jerk reaction to the post-murder cover-up given the 2015 date, looking to make sure he could have a steady income started early in case paranoia at play me thinks. Yeah, it did seem like he was pretty paranoid for good reason, right? Um, 
Okay, so Charlie owned the business when he told Erica that it was his dad's office mm -hmm, and therefore did not have access to records when the FBI came to an office asking for them. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I wonder how much more Erica Johnson knows. I mean, she seemed she seemed pretty credible on the stand, but she probably did also feel conflicted because it sounded like she had worked for the Adelsons for a very long time. And, you know, maybe she's worried about pay or I don't know if she was still employed there when she was testifying. Well, I mean, not in the latest trial because the Adelson Institute has already switched ownership. Yeah. Um, do you think Katie's attorney gave bad advice? Well, I don't even really know what advice they gave her, though. Yeah. I mean, I know on Mentor Lawyers, true, what do you call it again? Um, Deep Dive True Crime on his YouTube channel, he had an interview with Tara Kawas and Christopher DeCoste from a while back, not recently, but maybe from a couple of years ago or so, but I haven't even watched it yet. Yeah. But I mean, there's only so much attorneys can do though. I mean, so, I mean, being an attorney myself, I've been <laughs> in those kinds of uncomfortable situations where, you know, your client is kind of like the, the, the lousy person or the person lying to you or whatever, but you still have to do your job for them. Um, yeah. So I have no idea what they might've told her, but it, it was kind of, kind of sad and strange that um, Tara Kawas was seen crying right after the guilty verdict in Katie's trial. Yeah, Charlie is jealous that Wendy is getting all this free money from Dan's murder, which she should be charged for too. And uh, light bulb lit on his, <laughs> yeah, yeah, everybody wants free money, right? It's a nice payout day. Yeah. I think you have to get a notarized doc to Tallahassee. Oh, oh, okay. In order to get access to something. Yeah, yeah. Just keep up the good work. It's very interesting to see what information is available. Harvey is named in the discovery documents as part of the family huddle by the pool condo post bump by law enforcement. That tells me a lot. Hmm. Okay, interesting. Yeah, Harvey was in at 200%. Fancy's calls tell it all. Okay, so maybe there's a recording that I that I haven't watched yet. Yeah. There's just too much to digest, isn't there? Yeah. Oldest brother living in New York City is probably thanking his lucky stars. Yeah. I thought he lived like in a smaller town, like not, not actually in New York City, but oh well. Yeah. But definitely, I mean, he seems to be a good guy and he cares about justice for Dan Norkel. He's part of that Facebook group. Yeah. Is it common for a defense? No, it's not common at all. Yeah, that's why I, I said that it seemed kind of weird. It's like, come on, you know, like, did you really think that she was like, she was so innocent? Uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, or maybe it was just the stress of getting the whole darn thing over with. But, you know, I think most, most attorneys would probably be too embarrassed to just cry when the cameras are still rolling and there are still people in the courtroom. I mean, at least go to go to the bathroom or something. Yeah. Um, July 18th will be eight years that the entire Adelson family has been free. They need to get arrested for all this all for, well, we shall see. Yeah. Robert is sensible. Yeah. I mean, he seems like a good guy and um, yeah, just doing some sleuthing. His wife seems like a really smart person. So she's an ER doctor and she was also on some sort of game show. Now I can't remember what the name of the game show was, but it, it had to do with something where you had to be really smart. It wasn't Jeopardy. Was it Jeopardy? I don't know. I mean, I, I don't watch those game shows anymore, but it was on some sort of um, game show or she was on a game show and um, might have won some money on that. Yeah. So that's, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Do we think Katie will finally float? I don't know. I mean, maybe. I mean, what does she have to lose at this point? Because she's already most likely she's going to be sentenced to life in jail or life in prison anyway. Yeah. So we'll see if there's any deal that's still going to be made. All the other attorneys that I've, um, you know, read stuff about, uh, they, they basically say there's still that small window of opportunity. Yeah. Before sentencing. Yeah. How's she going to do with her fake boo? <laughs> yeah, that's what I've heard. That um, Not that I know from personal knowledge, but uh, yeah, do those fake boobs only last for about 20 years or they could leak or, you know, they could really be sagging after a while. So she's already had them since, what, like 
fall of 2014. So it's already been almost eight years since she had the breast augmentation <laughs> surgery. Yeah. Well, I mean, prisoners are entitled to medical care. So I guess, I don't know, like if would they would they take her, let her get out of the prison to see a specialist? Maybe, you know, because it's, it's not like some other countries where prisoners aren't entitled to any rights or medical care or whatever. So if it's medically necessary, I think she would be able to get something done about her fake boobs if they're leaking or she's having problems with them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. I'm interested if Katie initially contacted her lawyers or Charlie did. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think we're entitled to find out that information, though. Yeah. Tara was sparring frequently on Instagram with anyone during this trial. Oh, that's very unprofessional. I was shocked that an attorney would discuss an ongoing trial. She had said, yeah, yeah. I mean, come on. Anybody, even a young attorney should know better than that. While your trial is going on, you don't need to be arguing about your case on Instagram. I mean, get get back to work, you know, unless she's able to charge her client for that. Yeah, I think defense was crying because no more money. Yeah, it could be, could be. Yeah. I'm wondering if Donna will fall on the sword for Charlie. She probably won't. Nah, probably not because it, it's pretty clear that Charlie did a lot of the legwork. I mean, it wasn't like she totally forced him to do all that. He's a grown man at the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I saw that. I think I might have seen it on her Facebook. Yeah, that she was on a on some sort of, what's it? Yeah, there was some sort of like academic bowl type of competition that was probably on a local channel when she was in high school. So she had a picture of that up there. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we'll probably have to fast forward through all these comments. Yeah, Katie's going to be envy. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, you saw that the restaurant is permanently closed. Yeah, thanks to Terry, one of the commenters who's often on commenting on this channel, she, she did tell me that Dolce Vita closed down. Yeah, and is some sort of other restaurant now. Yeah. Yeah, I have no idea if she's cooperating or, or whatever. I mean, if I were her attorney, I'd still be trying to trying to work out a deal so she doesn't have to spend the rest of her life in prison. Yeah, yeah, I did ask him if he wanted to be on my show and then I never heard from him. So, you know, sick and tired of seeing them free in the Brickell area in Miami. They live there. I see them all the time. Why on earth are they not in jail? I mean, Katie had to wait in jail too. Why not them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, at least the what is it? A state attorney general has changed. So, um, oh, oh, he was on the, oh, okay. So the oldest brother's wife was on the weakest link. Okay. That, that rings a bell. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that information. Um, Katie should have flipped after the first jury hung. She, mm -hmm. Yeah. But I mean, she doesn't seem to be the brightest light. So she was probably just listening to whatever her attorney said and thought that she could probably get off altogether. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know if Wendy was on The Weakest Link. I thought that might have been the game show that um, the oldest brother's wife, the doctor wife, was on. Yeah, whole family is dysfunctional. Yeah, although, you know, I think most people think that the oldest brother, Rob, is a, is a good person, and he's basically estranged from the rest of the family now. Is the owl supposed to be an indication of when Rivera was in Tallahassee? Post hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Or maybe he was just a doofus and he thought it was fun to take a picture of an owl and put it on his Instagram. <laughs> yeah, pretty stupid, huh? Yeah. And uh, the real reason because Donna has not been arrested yet is because the whole jail will not be able to handle the diarrhea that she will eventually have to have as she gets if she gets logged, lots of laughter. Okay. So, um, wow, it's already 43 minutes. So good thing I wasn't planning on covering this whole entire case. So we're going to um move on to Charlie Adelson's answer and counterclaim. And then we'll end up for today and I'll continue on with another live stream, maybe in a couple of days, because I need to rest my voice. <laughs> so yeah, that's funny that one person said, what's wrong with her voice? Well, first of all, I understand my voice isn't like the best. It doesn't sound like a radio broadcaster type voice to begin with, but then coupled with non-stop talking for the last week and doing lots of live streams. Yeah, I'm just totally croaked out here. Yeah. 
Um, okay, okay. So hopefully you guys can see that, right? The answer, affirmative defenses, and counterclaim. Okay, so I'm just going to paraphrase a little bit because whenever somebody responds to a lawsuit, they don't really have to give their whole entire side of the story. Instead, you just number your sentences accordingly with the, to match the complaint paragraph numbers. And then usually people just say, admitted, admitted, denied, 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 you know, denied. Yeah, so you don't have to give much of an explanation. That's why this document is only eight pages long. Okay, it says, Defendant Charles J. Adelson files his answer, affirmative defenses, and counterclaim to plaintiff standard insurance companies complain as follows. Okay, so he's admitting some of this boilerplate stuff, admits that he's in Florida, but denies that he resides in Fort Lauderdale. The allegation contains a typographical error. Dr. Adelson's insurance agent's name is Douglas A. Weinberger. That's what I thought. Weinberger sounded kind of odd. Um, okay. So, yeah, nothing really exciting here. They admit that Dr. Adelson represented to the best of his knowledge and belief all answers in his application are true and correctly recorded. They admit that the policy had an effective, an effective date of October 26, 2015 and a $10,000 basic monthly benefit. Deny all remaining allegations. The policy speaks for itself. Um, they admit this dispute exceeds the court's 75,000 jurisdictional prerequisites. Denied, denied. Um, Adelson denies that standard is entitled to any of the relief sought. Okay, so their first affirmative defense is fa failure to state a cause of action. Um, ambiguity standard may not disclaim its obligations under the policy because of certain amb ambiguities contained in the policy, application, the amendment, and the supplement. Such ambiguities must be interpreted under governing law against stand standard in favor of coverage, waiver, estoppel. Upon information and belief, standard issued a policy with actual or constructive knowledge of the information allegedly misrepresented and therefore waived its right to rescind or compel a forfeiture of coverage under the policy and or is stopped from seeking the requested relief. They want a trial by jury, and now they're going to counterclaim. Okay. So they're talking about partial disability. Loss of time means the insured is unable to perform his substantial and material duties for at least 20% of the time he spent in his own occupation prior to the date of his disability. Okay. So they're saying Dr. Adelson is partially disabled from his occupation. Dr. Adelson has enjoyed a successful career as a periodontist and his practice included numerous dental offices across South Florida. Dr. Adelson began to suffer from lower back pain and fatigue as early as January 2016, limiting his ability to perform oral surgery and periodontal procedures. On the advice of his physicians, Dr. Adelson reduced the volume and scope of his practice beginning in 2016 due to physical limitations and restrictions. As a result of his medical condition and resulting limitations and restrictions, Dr. Adelson has continuously been unable to perform the same amount of surgeries as he was pre-disability. Dr. Adelson's injury has resulted in a loss of time as defined by the policy, as he has reduced the number of hours working in his own occupation by more than 20% from his pre-disability capacity. Dr. Adelson's injury has resulted in a loss of income as defined by the policy, whereby his monthly earnings are 80% or less of his indexed pre-disability earnings. Okay, he's saying he timely submitted his disability claim. Uh, March 17, 2017, Standard erroneously denied Dr. Adelson's claim and refused to pay benefits due. By letter dated August 8, 2017, Standard attempted to rescind the policy. So count one is breach of contract. Um, they're saying on or about November 10, 2016 onward, he's been unable to perform the substantial and material duties of his occupation with the same frequency. He's been partially disabled. Um, they breached its policy by denying his claim and refusing to pay him the benefits. 
So he's suffered and continues to suffer damages. He's been compelled to retain undersigned counsel to represent his interests in this action as an, and is obligated to pay counsel a reasonable fee for their services. So he wants judgment against an insurance company for damages in the form of unpaid benefits, pre- and post-judgment interest, attorney's fees, pursuant to Florida statute, costs, and any further relief that the judge deems equitable. Um, okay, so, so that's his answer and counterclaim. And I did get some information that includes his discovery responses that are pretty interesting. So I'll save that to another live stream, maybe in a couple of days. I need to let my let my throat heal and, and drink a lot more hot tea and everything. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, yes, I know my my voice sounds croaky and stuff. So uh, yeah, I'm definitely not cut out to be like a radio DJ or or newscaster or something. I mean, it takes a special type of person to be able to talk like that nonstop. So yeah, Robert should testify and help make some necess necessito arrests. They always mocked him for being honest. I hope he testifies. He is the only good person in that family. Yeah, exactly. Because it sounded like, um, sounds like he was still in touch with his family when Dan Markell died. Um, so I'm not sure when exactly he cut off all communications with them. So, you know, hopefully, uh, I'm sure he's already been in touch with the risk, with the investigators or prosecu prosecutors, though. So, yeah. Yeah, diary. <laughs> My friend is right. Okay. Oh, thank you. Hi, Discourse Motion. Thanks for still being out there. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thanks for enjoying the channel and everything. And there's just like so much in this crazy case. I mean, there's so many like different ins and outs. And then, you know, if anybody's interested, I might read the appeal brief that was filed for Sigfredo Garcia in his failed attempt to appeal his conviction. I don't know if that's of any interest. Um, a lot of documents out there that are very, very interesting, not to mention potentially the doctor's depositions in the Berkshire life insurance case. Um, let's see. Oh, and also um, more information about what June told the investigators. I, I thought that was very interesting because I finally heard it directly um, or heard it through a recording on Mentor Lawyers. YouTube channel because he has so many videos there that it's it's actually um, hard to find things, you know, but this video of what June was saying to the investigators in initially um, was very intriguing. And it was great to have that just randomly show up on my YouTube feed last night. Yeah. Okay, great. So um, I will get back to work now time to go and cater to my clients and i appreciate you guys all being there oh thank you <laughs> okay well yeah sure no problem i'm glad that you guys care about justice for dan morkel and um yeah i don't know why he would refer to his brother as a dumb one when he didn't even go to such stellar schools as his siblings and um you know from what i've read it sounded like he had a hard time finishing from dental school or maybe even had some academic dishonesty dishonesty issue in dental school. So somehow he he graduated. Yeah. But um, reading about his so-called income, I mean, it's obvious that uh, going to law school was not the right decision because I, I thought about being a dentist or going to medical school too, but then I chose law. So that has made all the difference. That's why on a Monday um, during lunchtime, I am able to dress up like Wendy Adelson and um, and read legal documents to you guys today. So <laughs> thank you guys for being here. And um, I guess I will see you guys hopefully on another live stream regarding this case on Wednesday. Have a great day.